we're going to now learn about the life of St. Lucy from Butler's Lives of the Saint. This is the version that I like and recommend, Butler's Lives of the Father, Fathers, Martyrs, and Other Saints. The Glorious Virgin and Martyr St. Lucy, one of the brightest ornaments of the Church of Sicily, was born of honorable and wealthy parents in the city of Syracuse and educated from her cradle in faith of Christ. She lost her father in her infancy, but Eutychia, her mother, took singular care to furnish her with tender and sublime sentiments of piety and religion. By the early impressions which Lucy received and the strong influence of divine grace, Lucy discovered no disposition but toward virtue and was yet very young when she offered to God the flower of her virginity. This vow, however, she kept a secret, and her mother, who was a stranger to it, pressed her to marry a young gentleman who was a pagan. The saint sought occasions to hinder this design from taking effect, and her mother was visited with a long and troublesome flux of blood, under which she labored four years without finding any remedy by recourse to physicians. At length, she was persuaded by her daughter to go to Katana and offer up her prayers to God for relief at the tomb of St. Agatha. St. Lucy accompanied her thither, and their prayers were successful. Hereupon, our saint disclosed to her mother her desire of devoting herself to God in a state of perpetual virginity and bestowing her fortune on the poor, and Eutychia, in gratitude, left her at full liberty to pursue her pious inclinations. The young nobleman with whom the mother had treated about marrying her came to understand this by the sale of her jewels and goods and the distribution of the price among the poor, and in his rage accused her before the governor, Pascasius, as a Christian, the persecution of Diocletian, then raging with utmost fury. The judge commanded the Holy Virgin to be exposed to prostitution in a brothel house. But God rendered her immovable so that the guards were not able to carry her thither. He also made her an overmatch for the cruelty of the persecutors in overcoming fire and other torments. After a long and glorious combat, she died in prison of the wound she had received about the year 304. She was honored at Rome in the 6th century among the most illustrious virgins and martyrs whose triumphs the church celebrates, as appears in the sacramentary of St. Gregory the Great, Bede, and others. Her festival was kept in England till the change of religion, as a holy day of second rank, in which no work but tillage or the like was allowed. Her body remained at Syracuse for many years, but was at length translated to Italy, and thence by the authority of the Emperor Otto I to Metz, as Sigebert of Glembourg relates. It is there exposed to public veneration in a rich chapel of St. Vincent's Church. A portion of her relics was carried to Constantinople and brought thence to Venice, where it is kept with singular veneration. St. Lucy is often painted with the balls of her eyes laid in a dish. Perhaps her eyes were defaced or plucked out, though her present acts make no mention of such circumstance. In many places her intercession is particularly implored for distempers of the eyes. It is a matter of greatest consequence what ideas are stamped upon the ductile minds of children, what sentiments are impressed on their hearts, and to what habits they are first formed. Let them be inured to little denials, both in their will and senses, and learn that pleasures which gratify the senses must be guarded against, and used with great fear and moderation, for by them the taste is debauched, in the constitution of the soul broken and spoiled much more fatally 
than that of the body can be by means contrary to its health. There are few Lucy's nowadays among Christian ladies because sensuality, pride, and vanity are instilled into their minds by the false maxims and pernicious example of those whom they first converse. Alas, unless a constant watchfulness and restraint both produce and strengthen good habits, the inclinations of our souls lean of their own accord towards corruption. And here endeth the lesson on St. Lucy from Butler's Lives of the Saints.